All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Lab. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the first of many episodes on the CrossFit Open, and uh, you know, obviously they they opened up with another workout tonight. I believe it's hmm, three hundred meter row deadlifts and then double unders. So good luck to everyone doing that. Um, yeah. It wasn't too bad. Brandon and I capped ourselves at six minutes and we made it. It's how many rounds? Huh? I think it's how many rounds. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we got a lot of rounds in in six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm so proud of you too. So. Very nice. No, but uh, for tonight's topic, this is actually, a, this is a new one more for me or more relatively new for me. Uh, but the 531 program mm -hmm. uh, created by Jim Windler. Um, basically has gotten a lot of popularity over the last uh, few weeks for some reasons popping up on my feed everywhere, YouTube, everywhere, 531 program. Um, but mostly just for like, it's from what I've read, um, it's simplicity, effectiveness, and then the emphasis on sustainable progress. Um, so I guess I'm kind of curious since I don't have a whole lot of background on this, um, Brandon and Alex, what you guys can kind of shed some light on for me is what is the 531 program? You want to take it or yeah, that's you. Um, so five three one is simply just in terms of reps. So one week you'll do five reps, the next week you'll do three, the next week you'll do one. Um, at the beginning of that, it is very important that you max out and you will take 90% of whatever your one rep max is, and those are your working weights for the other percentages later on. Um and from knowing the creator, he was a member of Westside Barbell as well, um, early 2000s, I think, maybe late 90s, um, played football at Arizona State. Shit, she's going to have to piss. Uh, <laughs> sorry, new, new puppy training, and she's barking. So I may hop off and when Brandon goes. Um, so basically, he did it for simplicity, just to keep things simple and condensed. Um, and it works really well as far as keeping people lasting longer with linear periodization. Hmm. If that makes sense, because you're just constantly pushing, pushing, pushing. I'll be right back. Brandon, take over. Bruce, he's time to shine, baby. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it takes away all the, the guessing out of everything. So, I mean, it's simple in that way. So, you know what numbers you're going to hit. So, you don't have to go in and say, okay, I'm going to hit five reps. It's not like a five rep max. It's not like a uh, moderate five reps it's uh, it's at this percentage so i know i'm going to use this weight i'm going to hit it and then the next week i'm going to have my weight already designed you know whatever that percentage might be for that week i'm gonna hit it for three then i'm going to come back and do one and then you just kind of repeat the cycle and you slowly start adding weight then maybe you're hitting you know the 75 or whatever it may be percentage at, at five reps and then you come back the next week and then you drop increase and you come back the following cycle and you know maybe that 75 percent goes to, to 80 percent for the five and it's just constantly stacking and stacking and stacking and that's where it's easy to follow it's consistent you're always going to have some type of progression and it's not guessing which is like what most people do when they go to the gym they don't know what weights to use they don't know what exercises to use it's all very simply laid out so hmm. okay um did you touch on that he created the he created this like out of like almost like a necessity because he wanted to have something very simple um to do like once he was you know done competing and everything like that um he's also a very big proponent on i believe it's like the days that you're not lifting you're walking around with like a weight vest um doing some kind of miles or something like that so <clears throat> he likes doing that too okay so if well, there's thing I, I don't know about it. Is it always, are you always doing five reps on bench one time workout and then deadlift one workout and squat or is it just? Um, that I'm not completely sure, but I do believe that it's like, you know, if, if squat is five that week, then bench is three deadlifts one and then it rotates. Okay. That makes sense. I, I think, but it's been so watered down, like how you could water down a five, three, one method is kind of, mind-blowing but it seems that like every high school football coach that thinks they're a strength coach has done it yeah so yeah, we did, i just got done talking to one of our 
local pickway athletes, and he just got done saying they just got done doing five three ones this they, last phase. So they do a yeah. lot of it. Yeah. Um, they they'll even do it in the same day. They'll do the five rep max, then they'll do the three rep max, and then they'll do the one. And that's not how that works. Like you 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 cannot do that. Shoot. So how do you go about like that's just for the main lift? Then how are you going to go about throwing in like the accessories or like I guess the other volume of your yeah, workout? That seems like a, yeah, like um, like a lot of low. Volume. I think that's that's where. Um, and again, I, I haven't like picked his brain on it as far as Jim goes with it, but I believe like, because he had a knowledge of where his weaknesses were. So he would just do what he knew worked for him. So I don't think that there's like a set accessories that you do afterwards. Um, you know, I think that's where he kind of programmed in the conjugate as far as like, you need to pick and choose based on the body type, your weaknesses, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but again i i could be wrong um you know it's been a long time and he's updated it before so he's got multiple versions of it you know um so he's constantly tweaking it and stuff like that he tries it out for himself tries it out for his athletes because he's a um, strength and conditioning coach in london ohio for their high school okay i'd be really man i have so many questions now so like if you like a deadlift on one day um would you make like your squat be like some of your accessory movements or would you make uh, a lunge part of your accessory movements? Like, how are you going to program those? I'm just, I have a lot of questions. Sorry. Oh, for sure. For sure. You can. I mean, just, just because like it's deadlift day and you're maxing out or whatever, doesn't mean that you can't use a, mm -hmm. a squat as an accessory. Mm -hmm. You know, I like having like <clears throat> one of our first accessories that we have the kids do is a box squat for accessory too. So not only, you know, do you do it, some of your uh, main movement or whatever, but then we do like back down sets too. And that just gets them more acclimated to it. It allows them to practice that technique with a decent amount of load. And they can really like, you know, tweak little things and, and be able to adjust them while we're giving them the cues. Okay. So how do you guys go about like, scaling that based off like someone's training age like if you have someone who like because the 531 doesn't sound like it's a ton of volume so if you have someone who needs more you're just throwing more accessories at them or, yeah or just you know make their warm-ups longer warm -up as long. they go up okay that's how you know, have them do sets of 15 on your warm-up on the way that kind of thing or use it as an accessory you just flip it around you know so now you did your five rep max now you can back it down and do sets of 15 and there's your hypertrophy Okay. Hmm. Is there like a book on this yet or is uh I think he's got PDFs on it. He might have books. I'm not too sure. Let's see if I can but, find it. Yeah. One of his first ones um I ran when I was like first powerlifting. So just because it was a, a free PDF online that I found. Oh yeah, there it is. Jim Winler's five three one program PDF. Yep. All right, I have, I have something to try out and have some fun with. Gotcha. Good. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, <clears throat> I like it in terms of, like, using it for a large class or a large team sport. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm still a big believer that you have to have, like, eyes on the kids. Like, you can't just, you know, go do a, a one-rep max. I'm not going to watch or I'm going to miss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just the risk to reward there is just not, not there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. We'll go. Bear back. This Brandon, one. tag back in. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely one of those things you have to have a certain level of training experience to, to handle and the body to handle that kind of load and with the form and I mean it is nice whenever you have like you get your like at the high school to get that level to just say okay we got a you know a one rep on this or a three heavy rep on this with this percentage or a RPE scale for instance mm -hmm. if you don't really have that one rep max yet or if you're if you're in season or whatever and you do want to take advantage of like a couple off days in a row 
you might not have like that exact one rep max number, so you just use an RPE scale. Because you know, sometimes like I said, we talked about earlier, you know, in season, you know, your your body kind of you take advantage of those days that you don't have games, but you want to try to crank it up in the weight room. But a a ninety percent, your actual ninety percent number, and maybe or an eighty percent number, and an eight out of ten or two different numbers at the end of the day. True. Sure. So. I think the, the number one thing that kind of comes back to my mind whenever we talk about using training maxes is Squattober. <laughs> yeah. That's just, the nightmare that it was. Don't ever use like your actual 100% one rep number. Take like 90% of your one rep number and use that as your 100% and scale off that. Yeah. So really like an 80% is actually a, a 70 or whatever because it is a a long season or in that case it's a long month and it's all pretty repetitive or back to back and I'm gonna say this looks like it'd be a lot of fun to try just kind of reading through this pdf i mean i can i can see what alex is talking about in terms of like long-term sustainability like some programs and you're constantly acquiring and increasing volume like burning out and just achy, yeah. not fun all long term um I'm, I would be curious to see if we were to try this for a while, how this would plan out. Um, so I guess what would be some of like the, um, the drawbacks to the 513? Because it almost like, you know, nothing's perfect. What would be maybe some of the drawbacks of a 513 or a 531? Uh, <laughs> come on. That'd be a question for the big guy. I was going to say, we need the big guy back. Where'd the big guy go? One second, she had shit. <laughs> I'm not editing that. I'm leaving that just for you, Shutter. Huh? You're a dog daddy now. Yeah. You're a dog. Quit. Uh -oh. Now, I guess one of my one of my questions is, what are I mean, nothing's perfect. So, what's one of the drawbacks of the five three one program? Like, what is it? Uh People do not honor their 90% training max and right. they try to hit a new PR too quickly. Okay. So pushing, pushing load too much too soon, not yep. a good base to work from. Yeah. Uh, and then one few things happen. They either fail it mm -hmm. and they scrap the whole program after like three, four weeks mm -hmm. or they, um, they hit a massive PR and then they're trashed the wow. entire next week. Can't hit anything. <laughs> and uh, so then they scrap the program anyway. Okay. They're like, oh, you can't recover from this. Dude, if you can't recover from 531, I promise you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I was curious. I say, because just from, I've just been looking through the PDF as we've been talking and I'm just kind of looking at a few different things. And so, like, Obviously, one of the drawbacks then would be starting off too heavy. Can you go too light with it then? Like, if you don't have like an established uh, program, like, what, how would you know if like you're a, a new lifter or maybe you've been lifting for a little bit, but like maybe you use too too little of a percentage to like base yourself off of? Like, maybe you use eighty five or eighty percent of it. Mm -hmm. But usually, if you're a, if you're a new lifter, your newbie gains, quote unquote, for that first six months to a year is going to be wild. So who who you are six months ago as a newbie is is not who you are today or it shouldn't be if done correctly sure i was telling brandon this looks like it would be a lot of fun to try um very boring very like boring. You, yeah it, i mean if you're if you're like a man or a woman of structure and you can just go in and just be like okay this is what i got today cool and not change anything totally fine but if you need some like variable in your life or switching of the bars or something, then this ain't it. So how is this different from like the conjugate system like you've shown me? Conjugate system is you rotate exercises every week. So this, you have speed days too. So this is not going to incorporate any of that whatsoever. Um, it, I mean, it could. Mm -hmm. um, That's one reason it's kind of nice for high school because they have very limited equipment and it's very. Yep there That's except stuff like the, the high school coaches that have no idea what they're doing they just kind of get wrapped around like the big three lists like they always are 
Yeah. You realize, okay, why does my athletes got bum shoulders and bilateral shifts like crazy? It's because they don't do anything singular, things yeah. like that, unilateral. And it's kind of get wrapped around the big bar movements when sports aren't really wrapped around what you can do with the bar. Okay. There's different planes and all other kind of stuff. Yeah. You need to train them and all. Makes sense. Well, I guess that kind of answers my question about if you were to do like a hybrid version of um, the five three one, um, like with conjugate types of variations, that would you could you could do that to be applicable. Um, well, I mean, you you could run the five three one for your mains, but then you know have your accessories be unilateral weaknesses or you know training of the different planes, like you said. But yeah, it. it it makes it very tough when you have um, – I'm trying to think of the examples that I have from the school that I'm in. Um, you know, they they have a safety squat, squat bar, if that's what you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they utilize it as much as they probably should. Um, but, yeah, I mean, football players are constantly getting their shoulders wrecked. I mean, just every every day that you're in pads. So protect them a little bit by not creating that extra torque in there. Uh, overhead athletes, same thing. You should be living and dying on the safety squat bar, in my opinion. Save your shoulders a little. Yeah. Hmm. You know. Because, I mean, <clears throat> ju just like when we were growing up, if, if we sustained an injury or we needed a surgery, like there was a lot of colleges who kind of backed out. I'm it's still that way today. So what are they what are they backing away from? I mean, you want to recruit a kid that's got two shoulder surgeries already in high school? Yeah, probably not could be so great. Yeah. Hmm. No no offense, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um okay. I'm going to have to look into the 531 a little bit more. I'm kind of curious to see maybe what kind of, you know, I'm always looking to to take different parts of different programs and maybe see how you could like splice them, make different ones, or um, how maybe one could play off the weaknesses of another, kind of add in. I'd, I'd be kind of curious to see how the conjugate system would fit into the 531. That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, any people who shouldn't do the 531? Or any types of athletes that shouldn't touch the five through one, would it limit any type of progress? I mean, obviously you're going to make like gradual progress, but is it too slow for those who need to maybe a little bit more of like a, I don't want to say um, like specialized progression, but like, is it going to zone in on like all the different aspects like you would with a conjugate system or is it going to be more along the lines of just simply strength progressions? Uh, I, that I don't know. Um, and I don't want to do him like a disservice by discrediting it. Um, cause I, I just, I truly don't know. Um, but I also think that there are athletes that are not ready for even the five, three, one. I mean, if you can't do a, a, a barbell squat, you know, correctly, like empty, like no, no weight or anything, you're not ready. You need to be doing accessories only, you know? a high volume of back extensions, reverse hypers, hamstring curls, box jumps, any quad, you know, lun lunges <laughs> be great for you probably. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Quit. To your egging and on. <laughs> God. Got his furry children over there. <sighs> Brandon, how about you? Do you think there's anyone that this program wouldn't be for, or maybe like from what you've seen? Well, like he said, I mean, it's just kind of a you have the strength or the ability to run it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or, or are <clears throat> are you with a coach, trainer, peer, training partner, whatever you want to call it, friend that has a semi watchful eye? make corrections on your movement patterns too because if if you're just drilling five three one with the same shitty movement patterns eventually your plateau is coming faster than somebody else that's like has corrected it 
begin that process back up the up the mountain okay so if someone was looking into starting this what would you recommend training partner coach's eye um i guess since it's just the basic movements you don't necessarily need some of that other fancy equipment like the bands and chains um yeah, you just need a barbell just need a barbell and some weights okay could be a lot of fun actually i'm gonna have to read that pdf fully i'm i'm We'll have to dig in way more. Um, I can send that to you too, Trotter, if you want to have that. Howdy. Game on. Right. Any other questions on the 5 through one program? Or anything else you guys want to add in that maybe we didn't touch on? I hope I didn't butcher any of this stuff. <laughs> Apologize if I do. <laughs> uh, no, that'll be good. Uh, if it is something that maybe we missed on, maybe he could tell us. We could talk about it on on an episode. That could be fun. But no. no. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, If there's any particular topic that you guys want to start going through, um, or maybe if you guys want us to go back to breaking down uh, lifts and movement patterns, maybe some different variations, uh, we could do another variations episode as well. And maybe like breakdowns to look out for. Um, I know we had gotten a question... Oh man, I'd have to look back at the episodes. Um, it was on. Episode 57, it was the strength training for distance runners. Um, someone had actually had the question about, are there any specific programs for, um, distance runners that are more advantageous for, um, a runner? like any specific programs like we talked about the conjugate system in the past um is there anything else besides that they were just curious to see if there were any like specific types of programs that maybe someone's written that's like worked really well for like someone who's in the olympics or maybe someone who's at the college level like getting more into the nitty-gritty on that the answer is there's no perfect program but i don't know i would go out and say there's a specific program that is i mean really it's just Mm -hmm. It's a it's a group of people that's not really used to to getting into the weight room, so it's just not really necessarily worrying about like high high force production, but just being able to produce force, making sure your joints move correctly, all the the small minor, you know, the muscles like the hip flexors and the glutes and hamstrings, making sure they're able to accommodate the the load that you're asking them to do repetit- repeatedly, and to be able to withstand that. Uh, power output that it's asking for a lot of it's just like i had this conversation with our track athlete the other day it's like Mm -hmm. you already do the strength put strength portioning of it you're just not getting like the speed aspect of it where you're just repeating these long slow distant miles and you wonder why when you go to your race that third lap you're just gas is because you're just not used to that kind of threshold Mm -hmm. makes sense train for what you actually need to do Instead of yeah, that's all quote the other day. It's like speed or endurance training is specific to what the speed you're running at, which just like made first time I ever heard it said like that, and it just made perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're if you're running at a six mile pace, but your event is the one in the two mile, your body is going to acclimate and run at that six mile pace because that's what you trained it for. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you could even you you could even think about it in in terms of like linear periodization, right? Where it's just in subtraction. Like every single week, you need to take five seconds off your time, five seconds off your time, five seconds off your time. At the end of the track season, that's a whole minute, you know, off a mile, which is very impressive. It's not a minute. <laughs> Thirty seconds. <laughs> I was gonna say, damn. We, but we got a lot of like, you know. Well, the other thing too, that like uh, when people, you know, want to search like specific uh, workout programs, or something like that from these Olympians or college athletes and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that program was sp- specific for that athlete that was in the Olympics. Like you need to find the program that's specific for you and mm-hmm. you don't do that without having trial and error. Yeah. More individualized to that person. Yeah. And that's what makes No Name Athletics great is because we do that for you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
There's your thumbnail. Clip so. it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you guys were able to take that question and run with it on multiple, multiple. Let's see what you did there. You done. You haven't yet, but you'll get there. One day. One day. No, but. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, and like I said, if there's anything you guys want us to talk about, cover, uh, we'll probably bring back the exercise variation and modification uh, series again, um, especially with, you know, summertime coming up after spring. You guys are probably going to be hitting the gym quite a bit often, especially for those who are preparing to go into college sports. So um, why not learn a few variations and make some progressions in the meantime? But we will see you guys in the next episode.